Hello, this is Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today, I want to look at this image I shot recently in Formby. You might recognise it from my previous video. The first thing I should say about this image is that when I composed it, I had a panoramic format in mind. The foreground down here is very messy, and the sky isn't actually very interesting apart from along the horizon. We're therefore going to need to crop the image as part of the processing. In terms of the focus I used for this image, I selected a spot near to the sandbank here. As I was using a long focal length on the lens of around 100mm, a new depth of field was going to be limited. That's why I focused on the mid-ground and used an aperture of f14. I thought that would actually give me enough depth of field to ensure that the wind turbines in the distance would still remain in focus. In terms of processing this image, we're going to start in Lightroom where we'll make the basic adjustments. We're then going to move into Photoshop where we'll do selective editing using Nick Viveza. Let's start now by switching to the Develop tab in Lightroom. The first thing I'm going to do is crop the image to size. This allows me to better gauge the adjustment that I'm going to make. Next, I'm going to change the camera colour profile in the camera calibration tab. I do this before editing and adjusting exposure and contrast because colour profiles can actually have a big impact on the look of an image. For this image, I'm going to select a profile that gives me more saturation and reduces the exposure slightly. Typically, because this was shot on a Fuji camera, I would choose something like Provia. But in this instance, because there's a lot of yellow and orange in the image, I'm going to use Astia. Now, your profiles are likely to be different to mine, unless you're using a Fuji camera. In any case, the colour profiles actually a matter of personal choice, and it's worth experimenting with these. Now, with the basic changes made, I can actually go and adjust some of the controls in the basic panel. At the moment this image is looking quite flat, so I'm going to adjust the contrast and also the clarity sliders first. I'm now going to adjust the saturation of the image using the vibrancy slider. I prefer the vibrancy slider because it's going to emphasise the blue in the image without making the foreground overly saturated. I do though want to increase the overall saturation a little bit further, so I will use saturation slider just slightly. Most of the changes I want to make though will be localised changes to areas such as the sandbank and the water in the channel here and the sky, and I'm going to use those in Viveza, making the changes with control points. Now finally in Lightroom, I'm going to apply some detail changes to sharpen the image. And to do this, I'll just zoom in on one of these wind turbines here, and I'll use the sharpening adjustment. I'll reduce the radius, and I'll increase the detail slightly. I can see some of the noise in the image being emphasized here, so I'm going to actually use the masking slider to prevent the image becoming disrupted by sharpened noise. And I'm also going to reduce the colour noise reduction slider there as well. Add a little bit more sharpness, and you can see here the turbines are quite sharp. I'll zoom back out now, and I'm now ready to export the image to Photoshop, where I can then adjust it with Viveza. I'm now going to open Viveza using the Selective tool here. Now we're in Viveza, I'm going to add some adjustments using control points to the water in the channel. As I'm making the changes to the selections, 
I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard to see the area where it's selected where you can see the white as I move the control point around that's the area that's being selected I'm also going to duplicate the control point by holding down the alt key clicking and dragging to a new area and that's allowed me to duplicate the same control point into other areas so I have the same adjustment next I'm going to emphasize the sky and the clouds here and I'm going to do that using contrast and a little bit of structure I'm mindful that this area is possibly getting too saturated so I could reduce that there and again I can hold down alt and duplicate my control point into other areas next I'm going to in increase the saturation and the contrast in this sandbank again I hold down the control key as I adjust my selection so I can see the area increase the contrast and increase the saturation I can now assess the changes I've made that's looking good but I notice I actually want to add a little bit more contrast and clarity into the waves here so that it will attract the viewers attention and draw the eye through the image into the distance and again I'm duplicating control points by holding down the alt key on my keyboard the only thing I don't really like now about the image is this mud bank on the left I think it needs to be a little bit lighter so that it doesn't detract from the rest of the image now I could open this up using the shadow control but instead I'm going to actually use the levels and curves Now the reason I've used the levels and curves rather than just focusing on the sandbank here is I wanted to open up the image and make it feel lighter overall. I'm now happy with the changes. I'll just double check them with the preview. That's good. So I can click OK and return to Photoshop. That's now the image changes complete. As you can see, the changes are very subtle, but they're enough to make a noticeable difference to the image. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again. Thank you.